Well, hello and welcome to St. Paul United Methodist Church. Uh, thank you so much for joining us in this time of worship. Uh, it's always great to be together, whether you are able to be here in person or whether you're worshiping with us in the parking lot via the radio or worshiping with us online. Uh, we are glad that we can gather together to worship Almighty God. As we begin, let's quiet our hearts before God in prayer. And so let's pray. Dear God, uh, we thank you so much for giving us this time where we can gather together to sing your praises. And so we come here by faith, believing that we enter into your presence. And so do all that you want in this place. Do all that you want in our lives. We pray this in the name of the Lord and the Savior Jesus. Amen. Well, for those of you who are worshiping in person, you're invited to stand as you're able and let's sing our praises to God.
may be seated. And welcome once again to St. Paul. Thank you so much for joining us in this time of worship. Uh, my name is Clifton Vaughn. I'm the pastor of the congregation. And it's always a great joy when we can gather together. For we believe that we enter into God's presence. And God is a grace, God of grace and mercy invites us to come into his presence where there's no fear, but truly where we can rejoice in his presence. And so thank you so much for joining us in this time of worship. And we know that most Sundays we have uh, new people in our midst, our guests. And so if you're a first time guest to St. Paul, we're so excited that you're with us today. Thank you for taking the time to worship with us. We do have a gift for you. It's uh, located in our foyer area in our narthex at the Welcome Center. And so before you leave today, please stop by and pick up that gift and also more information about the church. If this is your first time to worship with us online, uh, please know that you're welcome to stop by the church office anytime this week. And we'll be happy to give you that gift and also share with you more about the church. Uh, there's also a, a registration link. And so you're invited to click on that link or if you're worshiping here in person, you're welcome to use the QR code and follow the link to register your attendance as well. That provides you also space to share any concerns or questions that you may have about the faith or about the church, and we'll be happy to follow up with you in that. Uh, later on in today's service, we're going to celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. Uh, what we believe here at St. Paul is that all are welcome to receive these gifts from God. All that is asked is that you are sorry for your sins and that you put your faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. And if that reflects your heart, then later on in the service, you'll be invited to come and receive these gifts from God. But as we continue in our worship, hear now this gracious invitation that Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sins, and seek to live with peace, peace with God and peace with one another. And so let's quiet our hearts for a few moments, confessing our sins to God. And then I invite you to pray the prayer of confession that's printed in your bulletin and it'll be printed on the screens as well. And so let's quiet our hearts before God in prayer. Let us pray together. Gracious Father, you sent your Son to die and rise to new life in order that death might be brought to an end and that we might live a new life in him. Yet we confess that we too often have chosen to remain captive to doubt and fear and ways that lead to death. By our thoughts, words, and actions, we have scorned your love, diminished the lives of others, and defaced your image in us. Father, forgive us for Jesus' sake and enable us by his resurrection power to live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose again for us. Amen. Well, here are these comforting words of assurance coming from the book of Romans, chapter 4, verse 25. Jesus was delivered over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. And so in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. 
Well, you're invited to stand as you're able and to pass the peace of Christ to one another. And for those who are worshiping with us online, you're invited to pass the peace of Christ in the comment section. And so you may stand and greet one another and pass the peace of Christ. I'm glad you're enjoying passing the peace of Christ. And uh, let's continue in our worship of God as we sing together, leaning on the everlasting arms. It's number 133 in your hymnals, but the words are on the screen as well. So let's join together in singing, leaning on the everlasting arms. You may be seated. And as you're being seated, I invite the children to come forward. And as the children come on forward, I want you to stand over on this side. Or actually, y'all can go ahead and just be seated kind of in this area, okay? So come on down, children. All right, today we are also honoring our graduates. Go ahead and be seated over here. That'd be great. Nobody's gonna bite. Okay, all right, um, now I'd like to invite our graduating seniors forward. We have Carmen Baker, Barker, my apologies, Carmen Barker and Bailey Money, and if y'all will come on down, and then I also invite uh, Margie Brown. Margie is our Director of Youth Ministries, and so Margie's going to share a little bit as well. Carmen Barker is graduated from Harding with a Bachelor of Science in Cognitive Neuroscience. She is a member of Delta Gamma Rho Social Club, the Harding Honors College member, and the Psi Chi Chapter member. She is pursuing a Master's Degree in Cardiac Function and Interventional Technology this fall. Nice. 
Bailey Money is graduating from Harding University with a Bachelor's of Arts degree in elementary education. She's a member and former president of the Sigma Pi Mu Social Club. Bailey has participated in things such as intramural sports and spring sing. In August, she will be moving to Northwest Arkansas to teach third grade math and science for the Huntsville School District. Bailey will thoroughly miss singing in the praise band and volunteering with children's ministries. She appreciates the enormous amount of love she has received from her St. Paul family. Well, Carmen and Bailey, we are very proud of you and excited for the life that you have before you, of all that God is doing in and through you. And so uh, for you as a congregation, there are some tables in the Narthex area in the welcome foyer that have some photographs and some details about these two. Uh, but before they return to their seats, uh, let's pray for them and give God thanks for their lives. And so let's pray. Dear God, we thank you so much for Carmen and for Bailey. We thank you for their lives. We know, Lord Jesus, that they are made in your image and that you love them so dearly. We thank you for giving them the ability and the strength to achieve this mark in their lives where they can graduate from college and begin the next season of life. And so we pray for your blessing to rest upon them, that your spirit will be poured afresh into their lives so that everything that they do will be pleasing in your sight, will be honoring and glorifying to you. And so today, we give you thanks for them and bless them in your holy name. Amen. All right, you may go back to your seats, but thank you so much. And children, thank you so much for witnessing this. We wanted you to see it because one day, one day, it may be in 10 years time, 12 years time, I don't know, maybe eight years time, I don't know. Uh, one day, you're gonna be up here too and we wanna honor you at that point as well through your hard work and dedication and actually going to school and paying attention in school. Okay? All right, not looking at anyone in particular. All right. All right. Children, you may go off to Children's Church with Mrs. Amy or back to your seats, but thank you so much for being with us in this time of worship as well. As they go off to Children's Church, I invite our ushers to come forward. Uh, we do have very vital children's ministries and youth ministries that help the children and youth, the students, to know our Lord Jesus Christ, to grow in their faith, to truly become the young women and men of God that God has called them to be. And so thank you so much for your gifts to support those ministries. And I invite you to continue to give generously so that we as a church can continue to reach out and bless families. Uh, let's pray together. Almighty God, we thank you for all the blessings in life and we pray for your blessings upon our gifts that these gifts will be used to help more children and youth and students to know you to live their lives for you. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen.
may be seated. Our reading today comes from Acts 13, 44 through 52. On the next Sabbath, almost the whole city gathered to hear the word of the Lord. When the Jews saw the crowds, they were filled with jealousy. They began to contradict what Paul was saying and heaped abuse on him. Then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly. We had to speak the word of God to you first. Since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. For this is what the Lord has commanded us. I have made you a light for the Gentiles, that you may bring salvation to the ends of the earth. When the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord and all who were appointed for eternal life believed. The word of the Lord spread through the whole region, but the Jewish leaders incited the God-fearing women of high standing and the leading men of the city. They stirred up persecution against Paul and Barnabas and expelled them from their region. So they shook the dust off their feet as a warning to them and went to Iconium. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Spirit, the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you, uh, LaDonna, for helping to lead worship. I appreciate you doing so. Uh, for those of you who are worshiping in person, hopefully you received a bulletin as you entered into the worship area. Uh, there is an insert in the bulletin that provides you with some sermon notes for today and you're invited to pull that out at this time and look through those as we go through our time together. An image of those notes has been posted on our Facebook page for those of you who may be worshiping with us via Facebook Live. Uh, we are so glad that we can gather together. We are continuing in our sermon series that's based on a book called The Story and it's telling the biblical story in chronological format, and we're nearing the end. We're now focusing on the stories of Paul and his ministry, and it's based on the passages in the book of Acts, but then also Paul's letters. And so last week we talked about the Holy Spirit of God being poured upon the early believers and giving them that power and the ability to be a witness for Jesus Christ, to be a witness of God's grace and God's glory. And in particular, one of the stories that we read was about how the Spirit of God revealed Jesus to the Apostle Paul and transformed his life, transformed his life from one who was persecuting the church who then became a bold witness for the church. And we believe as we continue on today that that Spirit of God can still transform lives. And that means that the Spirit of God can still transform your life. And even if that seems beyond ability, you can look to your neighbor and go, it can even transform your life. And that may be even more radical, but the Spirit of God can transform lives. Isn't that just amazing that we can come into God's presence and God's Spirit can transform our lives? Now, sometimes we, we struggle with that understanding. We may look at our neighbor and go, well, God's Spirit can transform their life but there's no way God can transform mine. And sometimes that's due to a wide variety of things. It may be something that happened in the past, and even though it happened decades ago, hours ago, it's still holding on to you, and you can't let it go. And you may believe that God may forgive you, but you're still trapped in that anger, in that frustration, and that unwillingness to let go. Sometimes it's just patterns of life 
that we say, well, this is just who I am. Uh, my parents were angry and bitter. They yelled a lot and, and their parents were angry and bitter. And so I'm gonna be angry and bitter and that's just who I am. That's just the way God has created me and there's nothing that can be done. And so we, we find ourselves in this position, in this box where we say that's all that can be. And sometimes it's just the culture that pushes us towards that because the culture says, well, for you to be a good person, for you to be good in your marriage or in your community or in your job, then you need to fit in this box. And if you don't fit in that box, well, then you're to be shunned, you're to be pushed aside. And so we get stuck. And yet the good news the good news is that no matter how stuck we may feel, no matter how trapped we may feel, no matter how enslaved we may feel, God gives us freedom. That when we come to God in the name of Jesus, he grants us that power to transform our lives, to set us free and to live a life on purpose for him. Well, that's what I want to talk about today is how God wants to transform your life, to set you free, to live a life of blessing for him. Now, as we do so, I want us to talk about uh, the Apostle Paul and his life. Uh, you may have heard a lot about the Apostle Paul. The majority of the New Testament is written by this man whose life was transformed as he wrote letters to encourage the churches. But let's just talk a little bit about the Apostle Paul. You're welcome to look in your notes as we go through our time together. Uh, we're first going to talk about Paul's ministry. And as we do, we need to focus on his strategy for ministry. So part of his strategy was that he would travel with a partner, somebody who was alongside him, who could help him in the ministry, and he went to the well-known cities of his time. He would go to the cities because that's where most of the people were. And so he would go to the cities. Now, when he got to the city, he would go to the synagogue because Paul was a very devout Jew. And as God transformed his life, he put his faith and trust in the Jewish Messiah, in the Christ, the anointed one of God, Jesus Christ. And so he would go to the synagogues because they were his brothers, they were his sisters, they shared that same history and he wanted them to know who God's chosen one was. He wanted them to know Jesus Christ. All right, let me just share one scripture to you. It's Acts 13 verse five. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the Jewish synagogues. And so that's where they would go. They would start at the synagogues declaring that message of salvation. All right, Acts 13, 46 draws our attention though. It says, then Paul and Barnabas answered them boldly, we had to speak the word of God to you first. Since you reject it and do not consider yourselves worthy of eternal life, we now turn to the Gentiles. And that's what we see in Paul's ministry time and time again. He would begin at the synagogues. He would begin with those who shared that common history, those who shared that common background, and he would share with them that good news of salvation that's in Jesus. And then as they rejected that message, as they pushed him away, then he would turn to the rest of the city and declare the good news to all those who are not from a Jewish background. And that's that term in the Bible, it's called Gentiles. Anyone who's not Jewish would be considered a Gentile. And so then he proclaims that good news and the Gentiles would come and put their faith in God as he revealed himself in Jesus. All right, his other strategy uh, was then to not only proclaim the news of salvation, but was then to go and encourage the churches. And if we think of the Apostle Paul, well, let me rephrase it this way. When I think of the Apostle Paul, 
I tend to think of him encouraging the churches uh, more than his evangelistic efforts because he wrote the majority of the New Testament. And those letters that he wrote were letters of encouragement to the churches. They were not written just to the wide variety of people in Rome or in Corinth or different places. He was writing to churches to teach them, to encourage them, to help them in their faith. Let me read the scripture to you. It's Acts 14, verses 21 and 22. It says, Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium, Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true in the faith. And so he spent a lot of his life not only starting churches, but encouraging them. All right, so what was his message? His message was, well, really twofold. Uh, One, it was lifting up Jesus as the means of salvation, lifting up Jesus as the means of forgiveness. Uh, We see this in Acts 13, verses 38 and 39. It says, therefore, my friends, I want you to know that through Jesus, the forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you. Through him, everyone who believes is set free from every sin. A justification you are not able to obtain under the law of Moses. And so Paul went about proclaiming the good news that we can find forgiveness of our sins in Jesus. We can find forgiveness that no matter what we may have done, no matter what faults that we have done in the past, no matter what pain we have caused, no matter what heartache we have caused, that as we turn away from that sin and come to Jesus, we find grace and mercy and forgiveness. And this is not just for the Jews, it's not just for those in a particular area, but it's for everyone who believes and comes to Jesus. Zoe proclaims that good news in Jesus Christ for forgiveness. But then, and this is essential because this is the majority of his letters, but then he proclaims a message of a transformed life. That God doesn't want to just leave us in how we were. God doesn't want to just leave us with all those bad habits, all those bad character traits, all those things that have hurt us in the past. But God wants to transform us into his very image. The the biblical word or the theological word, the, the Christian word for that is that God wants to sanctify you to transform your life so that you're holy and righteous and pleasing to him. Let me just read a couple of scriptures to you that deal with that. One is from Romans 12, 2. It says, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. There's a lot that our culture, our our world around us, push us one way or the other. But as we put our faith and trust in Jesus, we come to his presence so that God will transform our mind. God will transform our nature, our desires, our interests, so that we're not defined by the world around us, but so that truly we'll be defined as a child of God, living our lives holy and pleasing for him. And that's what a lot of Paul's writings were. We read that this past week, and we'll read some more this coming week in the story. As we read Paul's letters, we begin to see how he calls the church to live differently, to live a life that's pleasing to him. One of my favorite passages, and, and our little one is, is memorizing part of it, not the first part, so let me read it to you. Uh, it's Galatians 5. Verses 16 to 25. It's a little longer passage, but let me read it to you. It's in your sermon notes. Where Paul writes, So I say, walk 
by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. All right, so that, that's the part that uh, our little Emma is not memorizing. Uh, <laughs> take it for what it's worth. Okay, so that's a part that our culture tends to focus on and says, okay, God's going to love you and accept you. Okay, in Jesus, we're all welcome to come. But God doesn't want to leave us in that, in that darkness. God doesn't want to leave us in that pain. God doesn't want to leave us in that sinfulness. God wants to forgive us and transform our lives, to fill us with his spirit so that we will begin to live differently for him. And that's where we come to that second part, which Emma is memorizing and hopefully a lot of you as well. But the fruit of the spirit is love. Joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. And that's what Paul was preaching. It was that message of forgiveness in Jesus and life transformation by the power of his spirit. All right, so what were the reactions? Uh, what we see throughout the story of Acts are two different reactions. Uh, one is suffering. One is suffering. It's suffering and persecution. Uh, we see that in the book of Acts. Let me just read a couple of verses. One is Acts 14, 19. Then some Jews came from Antioch and Iconium and won the crowd over. They stoned Paul and dragged him outside the city, thinking he was dead. Or Acts 16, verse 22. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas. And the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten with rods. After they had been severely flogged, they were thrown in the prison. This message that Paul was proclaiming, this message that it's good news of forgiveness and grace, wasn't received well. And there were people who were very angry about it. Because his message went against everything they believed in. It went against all that the culture was pushing them toward. And so they were severely punishing Paul. What it reminds me of, and I'll keep this brief, is in my last church we had quite a few refugees from a wide variety of places. At one point we had refugees from five different countries in the world who had fled their country and came to Thailand because they needed a place of safety. Uh, they had put their faith in Jesus and because of doing that, they began to suffer for their faith. Sometimes it was cultural pressure, sometimes it was pressure from the government, but most often, and this breaks my heart, but most often, it was suffering they received from their family members. That God had touched their lives and as they put their faith in Jesus and, and God began to transform their lives, 
their families noticed, and they were not happy. And so they began to hurt them and persecute them. And so these faithful followers of Jesus, in the midst of that suffering and in the midst of that pain, fled to a a place of safety. Now what I had the honor and joy of doing is hearing those stories, to hear those stories of how they came to know Jesus and how their lives were transformed. And even in the midst of their suffering, they would have joy in the Lord. Let me share two scriptures that often came up. One was Romans 8, 18, where it says, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. That no matter what we suffer in this world, no matter what shame or pain or heartache may happen here, is nothing compared to what God has in store for us throughout eternity. And they would rejoice in that fact. And then the second one that they often held on to is Romans 8, 28, where it says, we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. And that's that promise that when we put our trust in Jesus and we love him and we hold on to him, then God will transform. No matter the pain, the heartache, the suffering, God will transform that and use it for his glory. And so we see in the reaction, suffering and persecution, but we also see joy. We see joy and acceptance. And that's what we see in our passage. We see this in verse 30, 48. It says, when the Gentiles heard this good news, they were glad and honored the word of the Lord and all who were appointed for eternal life believed. And then in our last verse, in verse 52, it says, And the disciples were filled with joy and the Holy Spirit. And so today, will you find your story in the story of God? Will you come to Jesus and surrender to him your past? your pain, your heartache, your struggles? Will you surrender to him that bondage that has trapped you? As you do, God in his power and in his grace can transform your life to not just forgive you, but to transform your life so that you will be a bold witness for him to set you free to experience his joy. How will you respond today? Let's celebrate the sacrament of communion. And this will give us an opportunity that when you're invited to come, you can come and receive these tangible gifts of bread and juice as a sign of God's presence to be with you to transform your life. And so as we do, I invite you to join with me in the responses that will be on the screen as we celebrate the sacrament of communion. And so the Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God. 
brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey and set before us the way of life. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and the Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself for up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. On the day you raised him from the dead, he was recognized by his disciples in the breaking of the bread and in the power of your Holy Spirit, your church has continued in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Let's join together in praying our Lord's Prayer as we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We believe this is the Lord's table. And so the Lord invites you to come to receive these blessings from God. I invite those who are assisting to come forward at this time to receive the sacrament. body of Christ broken for you, the body of Christ broken for you, the body of Christ broken for you.
body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Body of Christ. These are gifts from God given to you. Body of Christ broken for you and for you. blood of Christ which is shed for you blood of Christ shed for you blood of Christ shed for you and for you the blood of Christ shed for you and for you the blood of Christ shed for you the blood of Christ shed for you and the blood of Christ shed for you gifts of God's grace and mercy for you Here in a moment, you'll be invited to come as the ushers direct. Uh, you'll be invited to come down the center aisle and there'll be two stations. Uh, you'll be given a piece of bread and you can go ahead and eat it and then take a small cup of juice and you can go ahead and drink that. And then as you go back to your seats by the outer aisles, there's bowls for you to place the empty cups in. But the altar rail is also available and so please feel free to spend some time in prayer there. Also at the center table, we do have some prepackaged communion elements. If you would like to receive those, please just let us know. And then we have a few uh, gluten-free wafers if they are needed upon request. Uh, also, if you would like to receive the sacrament where you are seated, please just let an usher know and we'll be happy to bring you the elements as well. Uh, during this time of communion, uh, we'll also be singing together one of my favorite hymns, and so you're invited to remain seated as you sing this, as you wait for your turn to receive the blessed sacrament. We'll be joining together in singing, I Surrender All. The table is set. It is the Lord's, and the Lord invites you to come.
now going to say the Nicene Creed. If you'll please stand. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We, we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you again, uh, LaDonna, for helping to lead worship, and thank you again for joining with us in this time of worship. Uh, we do have an, a called administrative council meeting shortly following today's worship service. Uh, if you're an administrative council member, I do strongly encourage your participation. We would also like to have your photograph, so during the 10 or 15 minutes before the meeting begins, you're invited as an administrative council member to step to the classroom that's in between the chapel and the church library for your photograph. This meeting is open to everyone, and so if you have an interest in what's going on in the church, you're invited to stick around for that meeting as well. We'll begin in about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, our women's ministry, they are hosting a fashion show, which will be a wonderful, fun time together, and that's gonna be coming up on May the 15th. They are selling tickets. All the proceeds of this will go towards their ministries and their missions. And so I do encourage you to purchase a ticket and come and be a part to enjoy that time together. I have been asked whether this is just for women or for men to attend as well. Uh, you are invited. So you can take that for what it's worth. Uh, then there'll be an outreach to our community on May the 21st. And so I invite your participation as we reach out beyond the walls of our church to bless our community. That's on May the 21st. Uh, but receive now this benediction and this blessing. And so acolytes, you may go ahead and light your candles. I would appreciate that. Our benediction today comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 3. And so receive this blessing from the Lord to you. May the Lord make your love increase and overflow for each other and for everyone else, just as ours does for you. May he strengthen your hearts so that you will be blameless and holy in the presence of our God and Father when our Lord Jesus comes with all his holy ones. Go in peace in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.